Hello, my name is Andy. It's about time we did a book review on this channel because books are good and books are good. I just read this book, Towards a New Mysticism, Teilhard de Chardin and Eastern Religions by Ursula King, who was, among other things, a Teilhard scholar. First published in 1980. I think I lost the front cover, otherwise I wish I had that to show you, but it's just a very ordinary beige right here. But not to worry, I found this book very deep and academic. It's, it's I'm not like an avid reader. I don't consume nearly as much literature as I would like or as much as I think I should, but through slowly getting through this book on my lunch breaks, on public transport, I have enjoyed its contents and been educated by this sort of, not really biography, but sort of investigation into how Teilhard interacted with the religious environment that he was in, which was Eastern China and Eastern religions in general, because he visited a few other places before settling in China to do his paleontology work. If you don't know who Teilhard de Chardin is, that's okay. A quick summary of him is he was a French Jesuit Catholic paleontologist in the 20th century who pushed forward slowly the uh, thinking between the relationship of Christianity and evolution and scientific um, evolution, which at the time was a very risky and unpopular thing to be doing. That's why he's quite fascinating and that's why he's quite respected in modern theolo theology and theological discussion today and evidently since at least the 70s and 80s. But disclaimer, I am by no means a Teilhard expert, but I'm really fascinated with him and his contribution to Christianity mysticism, and I'm really looking forward to reading more of his work. This is not his work, this is a work about his work by Ursula King. Yeah, so the main focus of this book is to track how Teilhard viewed and interacted with Eastern religions as a Catholic paleontologist in China. I uncovered four major themes in the book. Number one, Teilhard's early instilled desire for permanence. Ursula King um, briefly sort of touches on his childhood and how he had an affinity for collecting rocks, pieces of iron, almost as if he had a certain desire to surround himself with items of permanence and he had this sort of longing for things to be permanent. He had this fear that he wasn't permanent or that he wouldn't last and it was a very, it kind of disturbed him um, right to his core. And that sort of feeling kind of continues with him into his spirituality and later into his life. Secondly, Teilhard identifies these two spiritual roads, which he names the road of the East and the road of the West. And in these roads, he sort of outlines the gradient of, of mystical or religious thinking in really broad strokes in broad terms in Eastern and Western religion. The Road of the East, he sort of summarized that it was a religious instinct of the soul identifying and being absorbed into the divine in order to form a unification and just a single consciousness. Of course, this is a major reduction of and oversight of the nuance within Eastern religious thought, but this is a summary that Teilhard chose to go with. The Road of the West, is characterized by religious instinct towards unification with the divine without identification so that there is a preservation of love of some kind of a relationship between two that is in fact one but also two that kind of thing yeah so he identified these two roads and he critiqued both of them which is the third point his critique of both of them was that they had a tendency to be world negating. Both of them had this tendency in its own, in their own ways to be world negating and he rubbed up against this because of that earlier sort of instinct that the material had to have some significance and some permanence in the grand scheme of things. Otherwise, why is it here? Teato and this is um this was his sort of main hypothesis spiritually that the, that matter matters in in the spiritual understanding of the universe and in their interaction. This is a really, in, in a lot of ways, orthodox understanding of the incarnation, 
that God, spirit, becomes physicality in Jesus Christ. That's the orthodox traditional, you know, theology. But he kind of expounds it into this general sense of spirit becomes physicality in a sort of cosmic way, that all matter is connected spiritually in this way. His critique of both East and West, as I was saying, was that they traditionally have been world negating. The East in saying everything's Maya, everything is illusion, just concentrate on being one with, you know, the, the one. And the West had a tendency to be world effacing in its own way, by focusing on the individual spiritual journey outwards from the world, or trying to get to heaven, or trying to just negate, negate, negate all of physicality. So these were the critiques that Teilhard had, and Teilhard posited that these two roads were needed. And this is the fourth point. These two, these two roads, east-west, were needed in human history to allow humanity to reach a point of synthesis, out of which he theorized that a new mysticism of action could come about. This synthesis of the two roads would be characterized as a road of finding communion with the divine in and through the material world, thus in a certain sense incorporating both pantheistic Eastern thought and the transcendent stance of Western thought culminating in an incarnational spirituality in which the divine is encountered in and through the world and through the transformation of the world, which is a panentheism of sorts, to use the technical term. That was a really long sentence. Oh my gosh. <laughs> in summary, the book has some heavy concepts that are very well written by Ursula and not very well described by me just now, but this can make it quite a slow moving kind of book. So you have to really like grind it away as it were. So it's not like a thriller, but the concepts in this book are very interesting if you're interested in Teilhard and his relationship to Eastern religions. If you're coming at it from either direction, coming at it from being a Teilhard fan or an Eastern religions fan, like trying to trying to look at how Teilhard interacted with that stuff, I would say that's the, it's it's worth checking out. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.